Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the complete step-by-step -step guide for carrying out a successful pre-wash on your car. Now, if you are a beginner and you've never done anything like this before, please fear not because we're going to be keeping things nice and simple. So as long as you follow along to everything in this video, you should get magnificent results. So when I clean cars, I break everything down into simple stages. I always start off with the wheels, followed by the engine bay, then the door shuts and the petrol cap. Only once that's all taken care of, do I start with the exterior pre-wash on the bodywork. So the biggest mistake you can make is by getting too far ahead of yourself. So if you really want to get the best out of your car, then you cannot afford to skip these steps. So your pre-wash strategy will always vary depending on many factors, such as the type of vehicle, the condition of the vehicle, and not forgetting the weather. For example, sometimes you may have very cold weather, meaning you get longer dwell times for the chemicals, and in the summer months, you can get hotter days, meaning you may need to cool the surface of the car first, which can ever so slightly reduce the effectiveness of the chemicals. So there's an argument for either way you choose, but in my opinion, you have to make that call on the day. So what I'm going to do today is show you the standard practice that I use on cars on a typical cool, cloudy day. And once the weather warms up, I will revisit this topic to show you how to clean your car at its best in those extreme temperatures. So look, before you even start with any cleaning whatsoever, it's essential that you're organized and you have the right tools and equipment around you. Ideally, you're gonna to need to get yourself a pressure washer. You also need a quality snow foam cannon. And to be honest, when it comes to chemicals, you're only gonna need two. All you need is a citrus pre-wash and a snow foam. And of course, there are many other tools, but what I am gonna do is list everything you need in the description below. But I'm also gonna pop up a list right here where if you want to, you can pause the video and just take notes. And the aim of today's exercise is to soften and break down the dirt, not completely remove it. So all we're going for here is a realistic 95% removal of the dirt, making the physical part of the wash the last 5%. So this greatly improves the chances of getting a scratch-free wash. The first thing we're going to do is spray a citrus pre-wash on the lower third of the bodywork, because this is where the majority of the road film is. On some vehicles like this one, you may need to go over the entire car, but be careful with dilutions. Too much chemical will greatly break down any protection you may have. On cooler days like we have in the winter, you will find that the car is a lot quicker to clean, and that's because you can get around the entire vehicle without the fear of anything drying too quickly. So longer dwell times make more efficient cleaning. After the citrus has had long enough to dwell, you can then layer it up with some snow foam, and I start from the bottom and work my way up because I want to make sure that I haven't missed any panels. So what will happen is the foam will reactivate any pre-wash that had started to dry out. And I'm using an alkaline snow foam here over a pH neutral one. And to sum it up in a nutshell, pH neutral snow foam is safer to paintwork and it gently cleans, but it doesn't really make much of a difference in terms of removing much dirt. So this can be one of the reasons why people say snow foam doesn't work, because they expect to see instant results. And alkaline snow foams like this one have superior cleaning power, but long term they are considered by some to be more harmful to the paint. But here is my argument to this theory, because the whole point of a pre-wash is to remove as much dirt as possible, and if the pH neutral snow foam doesn't do enough, then it defeats the purpose of using one in the first place, because you're not really reducing the risk of scratching the paint during the contact wash. And yes, alkaline snow foams may be a cause for concern long term, but you would have to constantly use it over and over again, day in, day out, to actually see any of those side effects occur over a longer period of time. And if your car is protected with a wax or a coating, then seriously, you need to relax and don't overthink it. I've been using alkaline snow foams for many years, and at no point have I ever had any cause for concern. So when it comes to snow foams, you need to make a compromise either way you look at it. There is no right or wrong foam, as everybody's needs are completely different. When it comes to rinsing off the foam, I've seen so many grown men on Facebook argue whether you should rinse top down or bottom up. And again, I've seen the arguments for both. But for me, I rinse from top down, and I'll be 100% honest with you, it really doesn't matter. As long as you make sure that that rinse has been carried out thoroughly, you'll be fine. I don't see the problem with either, because you won't be starting the contact wash until the car is clear from all the foam. 
Now, if you had a car that was extra dirty, then I would recommend going over with a second hit of foam and then taking out a soft brush and going around all the crevices. But for most people, you'll be using the brushes during the contact wash stage. And the whole contact wash two bucket method is something we're going to carry out in another video. And one of the most ignored factors that I see so many times is simple. It's just not being organized. Now, I know that sounds completely silly, but if you don't have everything all set up around the vehicle, you haven't sorted your buckets out and got everything in the right order that you should be working in, trust me, it becomes a mess very quickly. And this is why I say break everything down into stages. Start with the engine bay. Only then, once you finish the engine bay, should you be going onto the wheels, tires, and arches. And then roll the car backwards slightly, then do the underside of the wheels where you probably have missed. I don't care how good you say you are at cleaning the wheels. Trust me, as soon as you go backwards with that car, you're going to see a few key areas that you probably couldn't quite reach with a brush. After that, make sure you then go onto the door shuts, follow it up with the petrol cap, then you can finally tick that off your list. Only then should you start with a pre-wash. And trust me, just by doing this, keeping everything nice and simple, will you get a successful clean. Now I could have spent hours going on about all the decontamination process, but I think that deserves a video on its own. So I'm hoping that this one's gonna be helpful for you and I hope you learned some more things. And if you wanna know a little bit more about how to clean your car properly, or you wanna learn some of the business side of things, don't forget to check out these two videos right here.